So I'm here with uh, David Kane at Matt and Mona's house, uh, filling in for Ben Emily Jones, who is uh, not here. And uh, we had a, a marvellous talk from David last night at uh, the group here in High Wycombe. And he told us a story, well not told us a story, but gave us an account of a very interesting case in Australia, mm -hmm. um, which happened in 1993, with some extraordinary pictures, which uh, hopefully we're going to put in this video. Um, mm -hmm. And I wasn't, certainly wasn't aware of the case and the details. And you have done an investigation into this case, and I just thought maybe we could talk about that for about 10 minutes or so, maybe 15 minutes, that sort of time period. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you can sort of um, go through the details of how you became aware of this and the people involved and so forth, and then as I say, we'll try and put yeah. the pictures in the video. Right. Well, first of all, I haven't personally done the investigation in this. It was my friend and research colleague, uh, particularly crop circles, Robert Hulse, who uh, we were down in the Wiltshire fields some years ago in one formation. We bumped into this chap called Gary Ninnis, who was also from Adelaide, mm -hmm. and uh, we got very friendly, and he got particularly friendly with Robert because of their both experience uh, interaction with ETs over their lives. And it's ended up with Gary coming over to England several years to visit the crop circles and visit us and stay with Robert. Anyway, at one point in this uh, friendship developed, he, he mentioned this case also near Adelaide, it's a place called Maslin Beach where um, this chap called Eric Thomason had accidentally taken three photographs, or maybe four, uh, of a UFO coming out of this water and then hovering more or less opposite, about 200, 300 feet off the surface. And Eric had several days been trying to get a good weather to take an early morning photograph for a competition run by a newspaper and he borrowed his son's camera because he hadn't owned a camera so this camera is a 35 millimeter film camera so in the 10th of March 1993 he set his alarm for 5.45 or something like that and the weather of the sky looked promising so he set off with the dog to give the dog a walk and walked a short distance quarter of a mile maybe from his home in Maslin Beach to uh, the coastline and uh, there's a particular point there it's called Oka Point mm -hmm. so we're about 15-20 miles south of the city of Adelaide so then he's um, uh, walking along this coastal path so he's like 200 foot up from the yeah. beach yeah. and then, uh, he noticed looking around to a, a shot he couldn't see anybody else no fishing vessels or anything saw this disturbance in the water very briefly and then this circular object craft appeared dripping in the water yeah. and then hovered off at him. So he had a, his son's camera with a leather strap around his wrist so he sort of took a, a shot uh, and then uh, it had three legs extended down. Uh, you see that in the first shot, don't yeah, we? Well, why the yeah. legs are there? Because they're over the sea, perhaps yeah. int intending to go and land inland somewhere, possibly. Maybe, yeah. But anyway, he, he, he noticed uh, a smaller dot up to the right, much higher. Uh, he didn't sort of perceive initially what that was. And then he realised this thing was, a, was a, another little craft, and it would approach the main object, which we like, like to call another ship. I mean, bear in mind, De Eric had no knowledge of ufology. He was 69 years of age. He was an ex-wartime decorated pilot with a DFC and a DFM. Uh, and he, and he wrote, wrote a book, didn't he? That he, book he, that he showed the cover the book of. About his squadron. Yeah, I'm going to show the cover of that. Yeah, you can put that in if you like. So, uh, he, he no computers, pre-digital age anyway. Yeah, he, he never owned a computer or knew how to use one. Uh, so he just grabbed these pictures and then this smaller object came round over the top uh, behind a bit, yeah. uh, and circled round and then went underneath and in the, the three shots it, it's, it docks and fits neatly and snugly into the hollowed centre of the mother ship which was like a, a donut recess. And you could see on the angle of the, the, 
the bit he was tilted at one point, and you could see visually what like a, a railed gantry over the periphery of the curvature that he could see into it with lights or, or something. Uh, so yeah, it was internal lights around this gantry, and then the, there was three lights underneath, sort of yeah. recess. Yeah. And you yeah. could you could see two of them yeah. from his position, which he thinks we think well we think now had some connection with the the docking procedure to bring the thing in, and it went up and and sort of slotted in neatly to uh, if you like fill the hole fill the gap yeah yeah. <coughs> And you could see this in the sequence of images. Yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't, he didn't get one of the final sort of docking, yes. did he? But you can, together, you can, yeah. we've got about three or four images of the sequence of this yeah. happening. Yeah. And I, you know, I'd certainly never heard of this. I think when we look, when I checked this morning, I'd seen this one of the pictures, but I didn't realise it formed yeah. part of the sequence, such as you've described. Yeah. Yeah. So having got, luckily, some prints to bring back from Australia, Robert brought them back, and he, he dumped them to me, and he he had a go playing with them on his computer, but I, I'm perhaps a bit more experienced or proficient, if you like, so on a program called P Picasso 3, I, I sharpened up Eric's original prints, which was scanned, or Robert scanned them, I think, uh, and it improved the things no end, and you could then see what were light beams, what were called tractor beams, uh, sort of connecting the, the smaller craft with the mothership, and then, as this little craft starts to go into the recess, if you like, there's one vertical beam of light comes down off the mothership, and two smaller ones appearing to come from the scout craft, to call it what you will, uh, and then it's drawn in. And Eric is now feeling a bit scared, and he is like a ditch in the path on the on the top of the the beach cliff top. So he, he sort of crouches down, mm -hmm. and, he, and he's so he's a slightly lower. And there's bits of grass in the bottom of his picture, uh, so he wasn't so sort of silhouetted against the sky. So the, the people in the craft possibly wouldn't have seen him, but I reckon they do anyway. But it didn't interfere with him. Um, and then it uh, set off inwards in inland over his head, uh, with drops of water still coming off it. Because it had come out of the sea, and on his dog, and his dog didn't seem to be too spooked as animals often are. Mm. He didn't. He, he never mentioned the dog being a problem. No, uh, being you know, pulling the lead or whining or anything, which is a bit unusual. But and then he kept the film in the camera, not unprocessed for quite a long time, to use the film up. And then uh, I think he went to a local chemist or somewhere and had the prints done. And then uh, they didn't want to do about it. He, he hoped other people would have seen it and there'd been other reports in the press, perhaps to verify what he had seen. But nothing happened. Um, anyway, he ended up making a report. Uh, uh, a UFO organisation came to see him, which he had no reason to mistrust, I presume. And he, he, filled, he, he took his pictures and he never got them back, never saw them again. Mm -hmm. And then his son was a, a role in the military, I think, the Australian Air Force, and um, said to his dad, well, borrow the negatives and we would try to have a proper look at them. So trusting his son and not being aware of any skullduggery going on mm -hmm. with suppression of UFO business, as ufologists are, be very careful what you do. He very innocently handed over his negatives to his son, who, uh, and months and months later, uh, I suppose he asked them teen times, he got them back and they damaged the negatives, which I assume was a deliberate act to, to, to do that. And, uh, and then he uh, filled in a sighting report for another kosher uh, UFO organisation meticulously written. Report. Yes, we've got a copy of that, haven't we? Yeah, and with beautiful diagrams yeah, of the craft yeah. and even assessment of measurements yeah. of the thing and height above the water, distance from him. I mean, you can see from that report that he was a trained observer. Yes, you know, he was trained yeah, to yeah. Superbly done. Anyway, um, for years afterwards, 
he was plagued and his wife, pestered by people, irate people, ringing him up, accusing him of hoaxing, um, and it was a model, you know, suspended by wires and what have you, uh, having deliberately not wanted to accept it was a genuine sighting, and he innocently happened to be there at the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. So. And the, I mean, this thing kind of shot after the water dripped on it, and it shot yeah. straight up, didn't it? Yeah, it went up vertically, shot, yeah. and then, then moved inland and over right. his head. And they were sort of looking, and it, you felt the bits of drops Drop of water, water falling onto yeah. them. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's so an extraordinary account. In yeah. say, I've, I've not heard of this before. Um, it really is an extraordinary account. And um, so, so, I mean, the, th the other thing that you also mentioned was, uh, when, when we were discussing this yesterday on the drive down, was that uh, Robert Hulls, who'd um, also done a lot of work on this, and he actually went out to meet um, this fellow, didn't Eric? Yeah, uh, in life, yes. and and yeah. we've got this picture of them as well. Yeah. And uh, then he tr he kind of uh, wanted to put that on the UFO uh, casebook uh, case forum, didn't he? he so did, he tell did. us about that uh, situation that rose yeah, there. Yeah, well, Robert was thinking, uh, he's, by the way, he was quite happy for me to talk about the case on last night in the talk. Uh, and obviously I'm, I think he'd be okay about what we're doing. Right, well we'll ask him, we're going to ask yes, him on yes. so yeah. So he decides to give it an airing because he was acting as a crop circle moderator on UFO uh, Facebook forum. So, yeah. forum. <coughs> so he put the pictures up with a bit of a tale, that what I've said now, I suppose, yes. about Eric Thomason and how he came to take the pictures. And he, he, the site was, he was swamped with people condemning it as a, as a hoax again, just like repeating what happened to Eric in the Australia, which got Robert a bit cross, I suppose. He did his best to uh, to, to defend the cor our corner of uh, the authenticity of, of the report and the images. Mm. Mm. But he got a bit disenchanted and after a while he removed his name to be a moderator with Casebook. So uh, I think that's the only other time apart from private and friends, that this case has, has been uh, explored. Right, and I mean, we, you know, we were talking about this this morning as well, and I, I was talking about this case with Mark McCandlish, the uh, Aerospace Illustrator oh, right, yeah. and the Alien Reproduction Vehicle. Yeah. And then when I did a search for that image, or maybe I'll show that, it, that, that the one that you've shown us, and it wasn't a, as clear a version, was one of the ones that appeared. So, yeah. you know, I thought, having, you know, you haven't shown these images, that it did look a little bit like this so-called ARV mm. um, and somebody else had obviously thought the same thing and, and done this comparison mm. um, and that but all these other details that you've given yeah I've never heard of that and this whole extraordinary thing with the docking mm. in daylight you know yeah, when you first told me this yesterday yeah. I thought I was, oh, I was I was I assumed this would be in the dead of night but this yeah. is as you see yeah. in the pictures it's like yeah. And this is another example. Yeah, well, six o'clock in the morning. Six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah. This is another of those examples where you know you'll typically go to some newbie. Like, oh, there's no clear pictures of a flying saucer have ever been taken anywhere. Mm. Therefore, they're not real. Mm. Well, I'm sorry, but this is like crystal clear. Yes, and yeah. as you'll see if I show this image again, yeah, yeah. Uh, the thing that really struck me was the lighting where we've got the smaller object, which I think is just about to dock. It's kind of seems to be at an angle before it goes into dock. Yeah. And you can see the edge of that object, and you can see the edge of the larger object, mm. and the angle of the sun matches perfectly. Yeah, and you can yeah. just see from the lighting mm. that this this is a, this is yeah. this is a real situation. And and uh, all the other details that you've given, mm. we know the name of the guy, mm. we know where he was, we know the time, mm. we know why he was there. Yeah. Um, and yet people will put these CGI fakes up, and there's no background, there's no witness name. There's no description of wh where they were, mm. and they'll say, "Oh, this is the best UFO film ever ever shot." Yeah, you yeah. know, and there's that particular one you might have seen that was alleged to have been shot in Haiti. That was about six or seven years ago with these incredible looking things. But there was no, there were no named witnesses with it. Mm. Yeah. But this is completely the opposite of that. We've got crystal clear pictures, a very detailed witness account from a highly qualified and respected witness, mm. um, and we've got you know the whole story that you've given. We know the provenance. We know that there was problems with the negatives and that mm. sort of thing, and prints were taken, mm. and we know all of that. So this sort of case is to me proof positive that either we've got craft visiting from somewhere else, physical craft, mm. 
or we've got some advanced black ops program which had and working anti-gravity craft flying around near uh, Adelaide, wasn't Adelaide, it? Adelaide, yeah. Uh, in 1993. <laughs> you know, that's the, my, the, my, uh, only my two explanations for mm. it. Yeah. And, the, and the fact that you had this, Robert had this experience on the forums where essentially he is disclosing highly classified information, even mm. though, he, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't, that's not the way he would describe it, perhaps. Mm. Uh, and that's when I think they, they have these keyword searches mm. and as soon as they see, you know, maybe Adelaide, UFO, Mm. And that the name of the gentleman, mm. uh, Eric, and the details, it pops up on some screen somewhere, and mm. they go in and and manage manage that uh, disclosure of that information. Yeah, yeah. yeah.